All right, let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Let me get my tab here. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, my name is Justin Hunter. Uh, I am the founder of Graphite, which I'll show you here in just a second. Um, but the whole purpose of me being here is to talk about how Graphite came to be, uh, what Graphite is built with, which is Blockstack, uh, which should segue nicely into Aaron's discussion. It's a little bit more uh, of a deep dive into Blockstack's open source development tools. Um, but I think uh, what's going to be important is understanding my background, understanding Graphite, and then understanding the decisions that went into building Graphite. So I don't have any slides. I'm going to do a little demo at the end. Uh, so you guys are just going to have to listen to me talk for a few minutes here. Um, but let's start with my background. I think it's, it's important to understand that I am not a developer by trade. Uh, I did not have any formal education in computer science, engineering, anything like that. Uh, I went to business school. My career has been in customer service, customer experience, account management. And then on the side, my passion has always been writing, not writing code, writing fiction, right? So um, as, I was, as I was going through my MFA program in creative writing, I was getting towards the end of the program and I realized that all of my writing was on Google Docs, right? I'm sure a lot of you have a ton of important information on, on Google. And it started bothering me because that's my most important writing, right? That's my short stories. That's my novels. That's everything that's important to me. And I don't actually own that. I have no ownership of that. Google at any point could say, hey, you violated the terms of service. You can't access your account, right? Um, so I wanted a solution for that. So I started looking for a word processor type software that was, you know, cloud-based and allowed me to own my data. And there was nothing out there. There, nothing at all, right? Nothing would actually let me have control over when and where I could access it, if I always had access it, access to the documents. So my options were to build my own thing or to go back to Microsoft Word. And I mean, I was using Word 15 years ago. I'm not going back to Word and storing things on this computer and not being able to access it on my computer at home, not being able to access it on the go. What I wanted was the convenience of the cloud with none of the privacy or security trade-offs. Now, the, the good thing here is I have a couple of solutions, right? So I'm, I'm learning JavaScript, I'm learning to develop, uh, I'm finally getting over the coding uh, uh, hurdle, right? Getting it to click because I have an actual thing that I wanna build. So I've got a few solutions. I can build my own full stack application where I own the database, I own the server, I own the front end, all of it. Um, or I can explore the decentralized web, right? So the, the, the former is uh, more of what I had been learning, right, as, as a new developer, but it's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of maintaining the database, uh, maintaining the server. If I ever want this to then be uh, used by somebody besides myself, I'm back to the exact same paradigm that Google has, right, where people have to trust me. So I was fortunate in uh, that I was starting to explore the decentralized web at that point, uh, started exploring Ethereum, uh, Blockstack, I stumbled across Blockstack at the same time. So I looked at Ethereum first. And remember, I'm, I'm new to development, I'm just now starting to grasp JavaScript. And Ethereum's like, hey, go look at Solidity and figure out how to write custom smart contracts. That was way over my head, there was no way at, at that time. Um, hell, right now I probably couldn't do it. Um, so with Blockstack though, I went and I looked at Blockstack and lo and behold, it's just plain old JavaScript, right? It's, uh, it's node modules, install it. They give you a ton for free out of the box and Blockstack's ethos aligned perfectly with what, uh, I was trying to do. They, they give users control over their data, right? Their whole concept is user owned data. Now they go far beyond that, right? They're, a decentralized protocol with a token that is now uh, uh, about to hopefully get SEC approval and be the first token to get that. Um, but they, at the heart of their project, they are open source JavaScript developer tools. And so I, uh, I, I went ahead and started working with Blockstack and realized that I got everything that I needed to start building my app. I got authentication with uh, 
without having to manage user identities or personal identifying information, each user owns their identity. Uh, they, they get a self-sovereign identity provided through uh, the service that Blockstack is provided and open sourced. Um, users get to pick their storage provider, store data wherever they want, and all of the APIs, all the server-side logic that handles connecting all of those users with disparate storage providers is already uh, taken care of for me. And I got encryption out of the box, right? So encryption is a big part of maintaining that, that privacy and security to a certain extent. Um, <clears throat> so that allowed me to focus on actually building my app the way that I wanted to build it and uh, not have to worry about all of the, you know, getting up and running stuff that I don't want to deal with. Um, <clears throat> so what I would say about Blockstack is whether or not you care about the decentralized web, whether you care about cryptocurrency or anything like that, if you care about JavaScript, give them a look, right? Their, their tools are uh, second to none. Their, their open source developer tools will get you started much faster than anything else that I've tested. Um, <clears throat> but what it has done for me is it's allowed me to build this product that was never supposed to be a product, right? It was supposed to be just an app for myself that I could do my writing on, which it succeeded in that. Um, but then I've released it to other people and they started using it. And it's gone all the way to the point where this is now a full-fledged business. I work on Graphite full-time now, and I am 100% convinced that that would not have happened if I had taken the path of building a full stack application with my own database, my own server that I was managing. I would have had an app that worked, maybe a few people used it, and I would have been able to secure my own writing. But I wouldn't have aligned with the original vision of giving users, not just myself, but everybody that uses this, control over their own data. Um, but I've done that now with Graphite, thanks to the tools that Blockstack has provided. Um, and so what I wanna do is, this is just gonna be a real quick demo. I'm not gonna show you everything in Graphite. Uh, I'll just show you probably just the documents side of this. Um, but to, to give you a sense of what Graphite actually is, it is a secure productivity suite. So you could think of it as uh, Google's G Suite or the combination of Dropbox plus Dropbox Paper, except for instead of you trusting those services, you trust yourself. Graphite doesn't have access to any user data. Everything is encrypted. No database, no servers. Every single user is storing their data on the storage provider of their choice. And everything is encrypted with encryption keys that they own. Those encryption keys are generated the first time that they create a uh, identity and log in. So when I log in here with Blockstack, we're gonna pop out to an interface that's very much like when you log into Google, right? You've got a lot of different Gmail accounts. You've got a lot of Google accounts. You pick whichever one you wanna actually log in with. As soon as this loads up, you're gonna see I've got a ton because I'm a developer now and testing all the time. Um, so we'll go ahead and log in with my Graphite account. And that right there is all I had to do to get access to my private key and for it to be used for decrypting all of the, the data that I'm storing in here. Whenever this loads up, we'll have uh, the, the dashboard view. A lot of this is going to change here in the next release with Graphite. Um, so that's part of why I'm not going to take you through a, a full run of this demo, but also due to time, I'm going to focus on documents. That was the thing that was most important to me, right? But as, as I built a productivity suite that other people started using, I had to, you know, think about the needs of people that weren't just writing fiction. Um, so you can see here the, uh, the, the documents page is pretty familiar, right? It's, it's got all of your documents. You can create a new file. You have the title, the date updated. Uh, collaborators would be uh, people that you have shared this with. Now, the cool thing with that is when you share a file through Graphite, it's being encrypted with the recipient's public key. There's nothing you have to do. You don't have to type in a public key, copy and paste a public key, nothing like that. Um, you know, you select the contact, it's going to encrypt it automatically. Whenever they go and fetch that file, it's going to be decrypted with their private key. So there's no hoops for people to jump through, which I think is important. People, people freak out whenever you're thinking about encryption, um, especially you know, I've used uh, PGP encryption at the day job before Graphite before this. And it, it uh, there's a lot that you have to do to get it working. And if you're just a mom and pop shop trying to, you know, write a document and share it with, with somebody and make sure that nobody can snoop on it, you're not going to use PGP. You're just going to put it out there in the open and hope for the best, right? So that's a, that's a big um, driving force behind a lot of what I do with Graphite is try to make it 
as easy as possible for everyone. Um, so with uh, within the interface, there's a bunch you can do here, right? You could filter on uh, tags. You can add tags to all of your documents. So rather than folders, uh, you've got a tag structure. All of your collaborators, you can uh, filter on those different collaborators, the date of the last update to the documents. A lot of the things that you would expect to be in there, right? Because those have to be in there. I can't skimp on the things that already exist. What I have to hope for is that I hit on all of those things and then improve upon them. Um, so we can go into uh, any of these documents here. I'm gonna pull up the Graphite privacy policy. And so the cool thing with this is I chose uh, for this privacy policy not to live on the, on the uh, web host where the Graphite marketing site is and instead to live in here and it's shared publicly. So that's an option you have in addition to sharing with individual contacts. You can share a document publicly and it'll be unencrypted, accessible to anybody. So if I go to graphitedocs.com and we scroll down to the privacy policy. Uh, as soon as this, let me pull my screen up a little bit. Oh, scrolling. All right, there we go. So this uh, will load the public version of that document that I just showed you. And the nice thing here is now I can just, anytime I wanna make an update to that privacy policy, I just have to go into the document and I can change like the last updated date. If I make an update, I'll just make the update right here in the actual uh, interface. I can't click on anything because of Zoom. Uh, so I would just make my updates here, saves automatically, updates to the public document. That's all I have to do to make these changes. Um, you know, I can uh, go and create a new document in here and it's gonna feel very much like creating a a new file in uh, Google Docs or Dropbox Paper if you've used that, right? So you'll, you'll get your new file, give it a title. And we'll just say, hello world. And all of this is saving automatically. So the second you stop typing, a timer starts, right? And every three seconds of you not typing, it's gonna auto save. And just to bring this all back, the cool thing with this is, this is not saving to a, a Graphite database. This is saving to you, you as the logged in users selected storage provider. Um, all of that happens automatically for you. I could go through all the functionality in here, but I, I don't think that that's necessary. What I'll say is, again, if you're interested in JavaScript, forget about the decentralized aspect of Blockstack as an open source tool and just look at it from uh, purely a developer standpoint, and I think that you'll uh, enjoy it. Now, I, I do want to leave you with uh, with this. Graphite uh, is also enterprise, so there's an enterprise version. This version's free. Y'all can use this. Go to graphitedocs.com, sign in, start using it, but there's also a uh, enterprise version that will allow businesses to have access controls, team management, audit history, all of those things that you expect from G Suite and from Dropbox for Business, that's all available with, uh, with Graphite, but businesses don't have to trust those, those big tech companies to maintain their data. And it, it, it helps them with a lot of these new privacy regulations, right? GDPR, the, the California privacy regulations that are coming out. It, it, we know that those are going to spread to other states. So I'm hoping that Graphite's ahead of the curve. If you have a business and you're interested in this, please check it out. If you uh, don't, please check it out anyways and give it a shot. Um, I'll be available for questions after or right now if we have time. Um, and then we can have Aaron talk about the actual details of Blockstack. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Dan. Uh, yeah, can, can you, you could, in theory. So this is largely dependent on the user's block stack ID. So when you create an ID, you also can create different pieces of metadata in there that becomes uh, publicly exposed through the API. And so if that user has decided to include their uh, PGP key, then you could absolutely use that because it's publicly available. Yeah. So are you saying the entire document is encrypted and stored? Yes. Well, how about performance? Well, each document is, well, it depends, <laughs> that's a good question. It depends on the, the size of the document, right? So 
uh, for a novel, which I have uh, not in this particular account, for a novel of 75,000 words, it's, uh, it's a little bit slower, but the load time of that is, so let, let me phrase it this way. When you're saving, it takes a little bit longer to save. That's happening without you realizing it, right? Because you're still typing away you stop typing, it saves. It takes a little bit longer on the back end for that to save because it's a huge document that is encrypted and that gets larger. Uh, when you're fetching that document, it loads every bit as fast as Google Docs. That's one of the things that uh, I compared to uh, the, the first release of this when it was just for myself is see how quickly that exact same novel loaded in Graphite compared to Google. <laughs> It's, it's only being retrieved once. All state is managed uh, client side. So the saves happen, but when you're working on it, the only time you're ever fetching the document is when you first load it up. No, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it can, it can be anything. The easiest ones right now um, that uh, I say easy, easy for everybody in this room. The easiest ones are going to be Azure, uh, Google Cloud Storage, and S3. Um, but you could, I mean, you could store it to right to your hard drive if you wanted to, if you wanted that to be your storage priority. You could use uh, Dropbox if you're willing to write the driver for it. There's not an accessible driver just yet for that. But um, the storage platform that Blockstack has built, which I think Aaron's going to talk a little bit more about, um, is extensible to the point where you can use literally any storage provider. If you use Nextcloud, you could use that. If you use IPFS, you could use that. Yeah. Because it's, it's encrypted with keys you own, right? So right now when you're storing, if you go and store something on Google Drive, any Google engineer could go and look at that. Literally anybody can go and look at your file. Um, in the off chance that Google gets hacked, hackers have access to, to that data. The big difference is here, <clears throat> whatever storage provider you choose, it's encrypted with keys that you are the only one that has access to those keys. So nobody can decrypt it unless they manage to get access to your keys. And part of the motivation behind this and also IPFS is that there's the argument that, you know what, you trust these companies that store your data right now, but maybe you can't trust them in the future. Maybe you can still trust them, but you won't be able to trust the government under which they work and they won't even be able to um, you know, stop some third party from being able to get access to your data. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a, I'm going to piggyback off that real quick because we think about things through the lens of, of the United States, but there are uh, plenty, 50% of the world lives under an authoritarian regime, right? So those governments are demanding from the tech companies that work there access to their user or their citizens data. And with Graphite, somebody comes knocking at my door and says, hand me over John's data. I can't do it. I don't have it. Right. Arguably, our government does that as right. well. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking of government, uh, can you uh, can you choose your encryption algorithm? Because I know some people are concerned about like APS. It. Yeah. This is all elliptic curve. Uh, it's not. You can't choose it, right? Like you can't yeah. change it. Mm -hmm. I mean. <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt by the way yeah so let's let's say it this way graphite's open source block stacks open source if you want to bootstrap your own uh, encryption schema, you absolutely can. But if you're just, uh, you know, just some random user that doesn't have any sort of engineering experience, you're going to get the uh, the elliptic curve. One quick note about the lore of crypto is that supposedly Satoshi chose the SECP 256K1 curve because it was not an NIS, uh, NIST standardized curve, and he assumed that all the NIST curves were compromised, and so. The lore is like, oh, this person or people, whoever Satoshi is, chose that because it seemed to him 
or them or she or whoever to be the most secure curve. Could also be AI from the future, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> You have to, so similar to like, if you've ever used uh, LastPass, this is the example I use with, with most people that aren't in the crypto space or, or decentralized web space. If you use LastPass, you're creating a master passphrase, right, for that. You have to store that. You have to keep that. If you lose that, you're, you're out of luck. Same exact thing with uh, when you first create your, your ID, you're going to generate a 12-word passphrase. You need to keep that somewhere, uh, keep that safe. And that is what your private key is derived from. And the, the cool thing is this identity system isn't just for Graphite. It's for any application that uses Blockstack's uh, open source tools. So <clears throat> for each application that you access, I have one ID, right? That you saw, I have a bunch, but pretend I have one. Um, <clears throat> pretend I have one and I want to access Graphite and some other application that, that uses block, block stack. Each of those applications has their data encrypted with a different private key. So the, the master key is the key from which all of your application specific keys are derived. So to answer your original question, yeah, you still have to you get, you got to take that mnemonic passphrase and store that somewhere safe. Soon, not yet, but very soon. Yeah, that's uh, that is a popular question. I mean, I would love it if if there was a way to stop uh, the Google Docs editor or the Medium editor from auto saving to their database and just save to, to Graphite. But yeah, for any local editor, very soon there's going to be a uh, an API available that'll allow you to do that. Yeah. Cool. Make sure and unshare. Hey, cool. Come on up. Um, what's the uh, Zoom ID? Uh, let's go to uh, open a new tab. I'm going to meet up. Um, okay. Yeah, just type in for you real quick. Oh, yeah, you got it. Okay, you go. Well, do do. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, I see it. Yep. Yeah.